Hello and welcome to this tax calc video, where we'll be using simple step mode to input details for capital gains and losses that have arisen during the year. We'll also touch upon HMRC forms mode and instances when it's more beneficial to input the data manually. Simple step mode allows users to input details for each disposal and a PDF summary is automatically generated as required by HMRC. It also determines whether the entries are required for submission to HMRC based on the threshold set for annual exempt allowances and disposal proceeds. If the amounts do not meet the HMRC requirements, they won't be included in your submission, although the records will be retained for your information. It is recommended to use simple step mode to ensure any carry forward details are retained, such as losses and entrepreneurs relief for the lifetime allowance. That being said, with the HMRC file size restriction for PDF documents set at 3.75 megabytes, we would advise using HMRC forms mode if you have more than 20 disposals. More information on these instances can be found in our knowledge base article, KB3058. Once you have declared an asset has been disposed of in the year, you'll be prompted to enter the necessary details required for the PDF attachment. This includes the asset type, dates you acquired and disposed of the asset, and the funds exchanged at the point of purchase and disposal. Let's go through an example. We'll be disposing of shares and we'll show a gain and a loss separately. This is all the information required for the first disposal. Let's continue. Here, you'll see a preview of the details entered. This will be enclosed to HMRC as required. If you have finished inputting details, you'll be presented with the option of clicking on Next Step to go to the next section of the return, or add another disposal. For this demonstration, we'll come back to add another disposal later. If you have any capital losses that have been brought forward from earlier years, please complete the details. Residential property losses are categorised separately because they are used in priority to general losses. They can be offset against general gains, but only if you're a UK resident. At this stage, you'll see the section for Notice for the Capital Gains pages, which highlights that the capital gains entries will not be included, due to the disposals being below the HMRC threshold. If you'd prefer to enter and submit this information anyway, you should tick the box to add the information onto the return. As we still have other disposals to input, we'll ignore this for now and return to it after all of the disposals have been declared. Now, to enter the loss details, we'll select the type of asset from the drop down list. Next, we'll enter a brief description of that asset the date of the acquisition, the initial cost of the asset, the date of disposal, and the disposal proceeds at that time. Again, we have a PDF breakdown of the disposal details and can add another asset. As you're allowed to claim any expenditure incurred wholly and exclusively for the purpose of this asset, we'll enter some legal fees. We'll also be claiming entrepreneur's relief on this asset. In this example, income tax relief was claimed in an earlier year for the EIS investment. As there was a gain on the disposal, this gets added back to avoid getting relief twice. We will, however, be claiming the EIS disposal relief on this asset. A message appears at the bottom of the page that references completing an attachment to this instance. Please ensure that you attach the required documents for the claims where highlighted. In some instances, current year losses can be offset against other income in the tax return. These aren't usually that common and only relate to disposal of unlisted shares and securities, but you'll need to verify the specific scenarios with HMRC. As the £98 loss for the current year is from listed shares, we're not eligible for relief, so we'll untick this section and continue. Here you see the losses brought forward that we entered earlier on. The details relating to the entrepreneur's relief have been input as populated in the earlier disposal. You will also note that the notice to complete the capital gain section is no longer present, as the thresholds have now been met. Now that all the capital gains information has been declared, let's look at the PDF document that has been generated. To do this, click on Check and Finish, then Attach. You'll see a capital gain summary document attached to the return. 
and can save a copy from here or preview the content by running through the printing preferences. The document contains a disposal summary for each asset entered, a losses summary, an intermediary summary, and a capital gains final summary. You can also view the capital gains summaries from the summaries menu. Looking at the CG final summary, we can see the order in which the losses and allowances have been used. The system has ensured that the net taxable gains are those qualifying for the entrepreneur's relief rate. If we look at the SA302 summary, we can see the gains that will be taxed. That concludes this video for capital gains. Thank you for watching.